Hey everybody, I'm Aiden Mattis. Welcome to the Lore Lodge official podcast, 15 minutes late because I am not tech savvy. This is uh, your co-host, Aiden Thornberry. Aiden, say hi to the people. Hi there. Aiden, can they see our guest? Uh, vaguely in the background, but not vaguely quite yet. I can, I can bring him okay, in whenever you desire. Okay, so we're going to bring so. our guest into the foreground. Today we have Nick from uh, TikTok. He's the saucy dad, uh, as you may know him. And this is the guy who about... It was probably, what, around, like, the 4th of July, you started posting those videos of your ring camera. Um, yes. And basically, uh, I, I did a few videos where I was, like, I, I broke down what I was seeing, and I, I tried to debunk you, honestly. I, I assumed you were faking it. Uh, not, to, not to be rude, but... No, most people are. So, um, so I was... <laughs> but I, I, I did screenshots, and I screwed with the image, and I upped the contrast and everything, and if... I, I couldn't figure out what it was. Um, and... and so that was kind of when I first got interested in all this. And you've also told some stories of experiences you've had with, like, poltergeists and uh, some stuff that I think you said something pushed your sister down the stairs at one point. Um, yeah. And also, as I learned, I think today, you're from uh, about, what did you say, like 60 miles from Palmyra, Maine? 40 miles. 40 miles. Okay. So you, you actually, that fits perfectly because that was our, our video this weekend was on the Palmyra Wolves. So um, I, I want to talk about all that. We haven't really had a chance to talk about ghosts yet. Um, we've kind of we've kind of talked about like I don't know. It's been on the Wendigo train and the national park stuff. So I think I think a lot of people have been interested in the the more you know common paranormal aspects like ghosts and demons and whatnot. But I think that's what we're going to get into. So if you really quickly just want to go on and introduce yourself. So yeah, I'm Nick Fossey from Maine. Uh, I go with Saucy Dad on the socials, YouTube, and TikTok. And um, like Aiden said, mostly just post interesting events that happen in my life regarding those things like paranormal or sometimes I do reactions to other people's experiences things of that nature yeah of that para nature of that para nature <laughs> <laughs> all right um yeah so i guess let's uh let's just get into this um i, I want to start with the the ring camera thing because i think that's probably probably what most people are familiar with i uh, you got any updates do you, you want to just, just give us the backstory on that first <clears throat> So, yeah, um, the first one is you reacted to, I think, or tried to debunk the second one, yeah. I believe. I'm not sure. But, uh, yeah, so I got an email because it's all set up on the ring camera that when it detects motion, it sends you a little link to look at the footage. So I got an email at like 4 o'clock in the morning and opened it up, and right behind the truck, you can see, for anybody that's seen the video, you see this little kind of looks like a light bar. It comes from underneath the tire, slowly comes up, and then flies over the camera. Um, I posted that. A lot of people thought it was spider web and mm -hmm. whatnot. And I honestly didn't know what else to make of it either. That's kind of where I was leaning at the beginning of it all. Until three days later, we caught the same exact object, but in the back of the house. And this time, it came down to the ground. It was flying all over the place, and then kind of took off. Um, and then a few days after that, we got this big illuminated ball, that one that you tried to, mm -hmm. you know. I manipulated the image, of. yeah. Yeah, so that thing just kind of streamlined down the middle of the driveway. And so I started looking around on YouTube and different places to see if anybody had caught anything similar. And what I found was, for some reason or another, that light bar object is being caught all over the place. Mm -hmm. Tons of people are seeing them on their ring cameras. And you can distinctly tell if you spend any amount of time at all looking at spider web on a ring camera mm -hmm. and this thing on a ring camera, there's a very blatant difference. Um, but that big ball one, I haven't seen any place else, so I'm not sure. I'm not sure what either of them are. Obviously. Yeah, that. But uh, that one, that one was confusing to me because I, when I was looking at it, it looked like it was either something that was spinning around rapidly, and the ring camera was picking up, you know, basically a brief image of both sides or it was one side was for some reason not as illuminated as the other and uh, a lot of people that I've I, I did the video and a lot of people have been saying maybe it was like a pixie or something um, which yeah, that's a lot of my comments too. Yeah. <laughs> which you know up in a wilderness area like Maine if you're going with kind of what what would fit that that would fit um, but the light bar one I thought was interesting because that reminded me of a lot of videos I saw I uh, about half a decade ago, I would say, of people seeing rods on camera, like little light rods shooting across, like, um, 
you know, open spaces like caves and stuff like that. And there were a lot of them that came out of Borneo. It was kind of a little craze that was going on. But yeah, I, I thought that one that one was interesting because I'd definitely seen it before. Um, and have you you haven't seen anything like that just with your own eyes? It's always on camera, right? No, I do have a an, a relative that <clears throat> says she was driving down the road and saw that exact same thing kind of come right up above her car and through her windshield type of deal. But, but other than that, I've never heard of anybody being able to see it with their naked eyes. So, 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 I don't know. so you say through her windshield, like not windshield. not up over it, but like not up over the car. So like it didn't have corporeal form. Correct. Interesting. We love things that don't have corporeal form. What? I said we love right. things that don't have corporeal form. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, and then the, the pixie one. So is this, has there been anything in like in your house, in your neighborhood that's been noticeable other than just like seeing these weird things? Like is there any strange happenings or is it just kind of like you got stuff buzzing around? kind of just got stuff buzzing around, you know, and it's not for a lack of looking, I can tell you that much, because once we caught those three clips, that's, I just became kind of obsessed with it, to be honest with you, yeah. I wanted to know more, uh, but we never caught them again, I had, they haven't come back, at least on the camera anyway, uh, but yeah, I don't know, I'm really not sure. <laughs> it's so strange. It really is. It's very interesting, though. Yeah, I'm trying to think if, like, if there's, because I, I was racking my brain when it first came out. I was like, what could what could that possibly be that there's a, a rational? Because I always tell people when they ask me questions or they email me, they DM me something. They're like, hey, what was this? And I'm always like, well, is there a possible rational explanation? You know, somebody will be like, I heard, you know, chattering from the small park near my house at night, and I'm like, well, could there have been teenagers? Um, <laughs> and often the answer is, oh yeah, there are teenagers in my town, and I'm like that. It, that's probably what it was then. Ah, uh, yes, adolescents <laughs> exist. Um, <laughs> no, it's uh, funny. Little sidebar: I used to say that um, we should lock like teenagers up from the ages of like fourteen through eighteen, just because uh, they would be less of a menace on society. I was going to say I would love to know where this is going. Th this last year has taught me that that is a horrible, horrible <laughs> idea. I was going to say also because when they when they get out, they'll be so much worse. <laughs> yes. Also, Dude. like. Just as a thought, as just a thought experiment, imagine trying to tell your 17-year-old self that you were going to lock him up for a number of years. Um, yeah, that that would not have gone well. No. Uh, I just... <laughs> no. I, I remember, but I remember thinking, like, as a teenager, you know, teenagers suck. We should not be allowed out and about in the world. No, and no, but you I, were also thinking about other teenagers, not yourself. That's true, because I'm perfect. Exactly. You know, it's, there's nothing wrong with me. I, I was... I was, you know, fair enough. I was the perfect <laughs> child. Um, but I, um. uh, <laughs> the other thing was like, I, I don't know. I, I don't know if anything like this happened with. I don't know how in touch you are with NYU, but obviously, I still keep up with Penn State and all mm -hmm. that stuff, and I follow all the social media. And um, I just remember back when school went back last year and everyone was back in the dorms and everything, there was immediately, and this was after three months. This was after three months of everybody being locked inside. There was a freshman twerk circle in East Halls. Oh, boy. And I just remember looking at it and being like, that didn't happen any of the four years I was there. You locked these kids up for one summer. One summer! And they got there and they were like, let's all get in a circle and you know, get on Barstool. And I did some fun stuff that should have gotten on Barstool. I, I had the... Careful. I had the... We had the... Um, we tied a, like, 40-foot extension cable to a bucket and then lowered it down to the, the Grubhub driver four floors below us so we could just hoist our food up without going downstairs. Um, and I was like, this was... This was genius. This was an invention for the ages. Yes. And I sent it to Barstool and they just left me on red. They saw it. Because to be fair, Barstool's not really about like, like ingenuity. Easy. They're about yeah. like how many floors up can you jump from and break a folding table. Well, that's the thing. My same group of friends, we uh, affixed fireworks to a shopping cart that they stole. Um, and, you know, I'm going to say everything in third person terms for this one. Oh, um, My friends stole a shopping cart from, uh, I think it was Weiss, 
and then they affixed fireworks to the rear of it and then put someone that was definitely not me, it wasn't, um, into the shopping cart, lit the fireworks, and let the fireworks propel them across the parking lot at Beaver Hill. Uh, and I watched this un unfold safely from a distance. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> yes, of course. That got on Barstool. Well, see, but that's that's the kind of thing that Barstool looks for. Yeah. <laughs> Nick, did you did you go to college? No, I did. Okay, so I, did. I started working right out of. You school. made the right choice. Um, yeah. <laughs> holy Easily. lord, did I witness some dumb stuff. And and the thing is, the thing is, I went to college. I spent four years and an ungodly amount of money. And wh what am I doing with my degree, Aiden? You're currently sitting in your bedroom. At my uh, parents' house. At your parents' house, hosting a podcast. Exactly. D do you think I needed a degree to do that? No. No. Probably. It's... Well, well. Okay. Let's be fair. All of the all, all of the information that you're using and utilizing, a lot of the information <laughs> that you're using and utilizing uh, to kind of facilitate your entire brand was learned in college to some extent based off of the major and many minors that you had. Exactly how much time do you think we spent talking about the National Park Service in my medieval studies courses? Yes, but your own Glendower video. Well, yeah, that's like one video. Yes, but like there was the, more. There's the Harold Hadrada one, too. Um, I feel bad for it. So Aiden edits all of our videos for YouTube, and I... The issue with that is I record all of our videos for YouTube, yes. and I get frustrated with myself very easily. So Aiden gets to sort through like an hour of me just like screaming at the camera when in between takes, and it's got to look like the most bipolar shit. To be because fair, because I go from like cursing out the camera to like totally professional, like you know, just reading off my script and everything. To be fair, most of the time it's it's usually only a half hour at most, and most of the time it's usually just going. Like, so the Wilson fam. So the Wilson. Oh, the <laughs> so the Wilson family so lives funny. in. Gl <laughs> so the Wilson family lives in South oh, Albuquerque. Oh, you yeah. didn't. You didn't. You didn't go through the videos I sent you on yesterday, did you? Or Friday? Nah. <laughs> which one? The the Harold Herdrada one. I, 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 I was not doing. Well. No, I said usually. Usually. It was like usually. I was like four hours into recording content. I was just trying to get ahead. I I'd, I'd done a bunch of TikToks. I had spent like four hours researching, and I was just exhausted. And I was trying to do be, to be more professional about it and actually read. Yep. And the problem was, um, I kept messing up like individual like words, or I'd I'd mispronounce something, or I'd trip over myself, and I would just start cursing at the camera. <laughs> and, and you're gonna see it. There's one point at which I look like I'm a about to just jump out my window. Really? <laughs> which which content was that for? What this a... is the Harold Hadrada one. Okay, yeah, I haven't Tuesday. gone through that one yet, I don't think. Yeah. Fun fact, we're launching a Tuesday series, which is going to be me just talking about medieval history. Yes. In addition to Thornberry Thursdays. Can you do me a favor? Can you title the the video files what uh, video they're for? I've been putting them in, a, in files. Have you? Yeah. It's been just been saying, like, numbers. But it's fine, we'll worry about that later. Okay. Anyway, um, <laughs> Nick, you were going to tell us a story about your difficulties in recording, and I want to hear it, please. Yeah, no, I just relate very much. To <laughs> I end up making funny noises with my mouth. You know, I'll start my sentence seven times. Mm -hmm. and I don't know. I, Either the dyslexia that I didn't know I had comes out. <laughs> the, that's the thing about recording for, like, TikTok videos is... I don't think people will realize, like, it, you get this finished product, and it's nice and clean, and, you know, you, you nailed all the facial expressions, and you said all your words right, and you spoke the language you've been speaking your entire life correctly, <laughs> and everyone's like, wow, he's so well-spoken, and you're like, no. <laughs> I spent 30 minutes recording the last 20 seconds over and over yeah. and over. <laughs> to be fair, there are some videos where I can just kind of sit back and let you talk, because you'll go, like, a solid... 10 minutes of just uninterrupted regurgitation of history <laughs> and I can just sit there and be like I 
my job is eat, I will I'm gonna make some mac and cheese. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. He he hasn't done me dirty by like accidentally leaving something stupid in yet, so that's good. I'm glad because there are some videos where I just kind of assume where the waveform <laughs> is all together yeah. that it's fine. But like it's when you see that gap and I'm yes. just like it <laughs> Yes. I, I refuse to watch the raw footage because there's points where I'll say something and then I'll just... Yeah. Hey, wait, and it'll be like that for and a then solid I'll just go two and right a half back minutes. Into it. Like, there are times where it'll be two and a half minutes where it's just kind of I'm nothing. frozen, I'm just buffering. Yeah, and like, then I'll, well, then I'll skip through yeah. and he'll be watching, like, a clip, like, a portion of a YouTube video just to, like, like uh, catalog or act as a catalyst for the, like, memory in his head. And then, like, I'll right. skip through another ten seconds and he's in the middle of, like, at 19, or, like, in, <laughs> in, like, in 1432, they were doing this edit or whatever, and I'm like, oh, okay, we're good, we're back, we're here, we're ready, what, we're good. What was the one, I, I was saying something, and then you, you checked a text, and when you looked up, I was talking about 1984. Yes, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't yeah. remember oh. the circumstances. God, yeah, that was, that was incredible. <laughs> it was early on, it was oh, probably, yeah. like, our fourth video, and he... <laughs> can't remember what I was talking about, but it had to do with, like, the 1300s. Aiden checks a text on his phone, he looks up, and I'm talking about Orwell. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> he was like, it's been ten seconds. Yeah. <laughs> How the hell did we get here? Uh, I remember that, too, because I remember the face I had. I was literally, because I, I was sitting in a chair, not like this, next to the camera, right? And so I was watching the... Oh God, it must have been... I can't even remember the content of the, the earlier videos, and that was only like two-ish, I guess three months ago now? Yeah. Roughly? Um, but yeah, and I'm sitting there, and I got a text from probably my mom about something, and I looked at the phone, and I responded to it, and I just remember, like, hearing, like, after my focus began to shift, I hadn't I think it was looked your mom, it was yet. some girl from North Carolina. Uh, yeah, my friend, uh... I think that's who it was. Yeah, it was probably Cornelia then, yeah. Um, and... So yes, yeah, so uh, it has many consorts. <laughs> that is not one of them. Um. Um, that was not the right answer I should have given. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> you didn't even deny it. You're just like that's not one of my forty-seven mistresses. <laughs> like, that's why I'm recognizing that wasn't the right. I don't response. know. Um. Anyway, so the point is, is that I looked up from the phone and I remember directly. I'm looking. I'm going to look into the camera of the podcast. I remember just looking at Aiden. Imagine you are Aiden. I just went. It's been ten seconds, <laughs> and I, I cut him off. I like I literally cut him off in mid thought, and he just started laughing. It was great, but oh, anyway, that's great. Yeah, where hey, the Aiden, when you record for TikTok, do you record on the app? Yeah. There's, do you? You do. Yeah. Generally, yeah. I'm gonna be honest. Capability. Is that is the only yeah. reason that I use TikTok as much as I do. And I haven't switched to, like, Clapper or Byte, because, right. um, as I'm sure you've probably had the same issue as, like, me and, uh, Stikuyi and a few of the other, like, more, um, I don't want to say education necessarily, but the more, like, um, history and paranormal and, you know, folklore and, like, culture side of TikTok, I I've just right. been getting nailed with, like, community guidelines violations. It's mm. so bad, and they're so... They're just, they don't fit. It's not appropriate. Yeah, no, it's... It's so random. Yeah, we're we're having security, we're having Steven on in, like, two weeks? And he was talking about it on one of his videos today. He was, like, how he got, like, he was talking about, like, history books, and it got marked for illegal or regulated goods and taken <laughs> down. Yeah. And I'm, like, sitting here terrified that I'm going to lose my entire account because I'm going to, you know, say something. Somebody's going to report it for, you know, minor safety, and I'm going to get banned for life. And it's going to be... Right. Because like, I, I think that the way that their algorithm is structured, at least right now, I don't know if they're trying to fix it, is that it just, like, if somebody reports you for something like minor safety or, um, you know, anything, anything regarding, like, children, I think it just automatically just takes it down which i understand the utility of that but i feel like maybe it should have like it should get like the blocked from viewing but you shouldn't get the strike immediately like it should go to a manual review and they have 24 hours to determine like because it's just it's 
mind-boggling how many times I've gotten reported for something, lost my ability to comment or post for 24 hours. I remember when I first started using the app and I first got got like my first 50,000 followers, I would try to reply to everybody who commented. Um, right. And TikTok banned me from commenting for 24 hours because I was commenting <laughs> too much. And I'm like, did you not notice that I was like, is, is there no... It's just horribly structured. And if I... Well, see, that's my... My problem with the whole thing is how they don't. Once a strike is overturned and the video is put back up, that strike stays on your. Yeah, it's it's ridiculous. It's so yeah. I don't know. I, I should have literally one, mm-hmm. but if I get one tomorrow, it thinks I have fifteen of them, so yeah. I get banned for two or three days. It's like come on. yeah, it's it, it seems like they'll they'll sort of erase it from your record. So like right. like if you win your appeal, like you know it's. It doesn't, it, it goes away, but it definitely punishes you as if, like, the next time it punishes you as if you didn't win that last appeal. And I, exactly. I, I think my favorite one was the the one I did on uh, giant snakes in mythology, and I bring this up a lot. Uh, I used, I was talking about Jormungand and Apophis and the serpent in the Garden of Eden, and for the Garden of Eden one, I, I did, everyone's always like, oh, you should put you should put more images in your videos. Um, Because usually they're just me talking to the camera. Right. And I put a Renaissance painting of Eve in the Garden of Eden, and of course she's not wearing clothes, and TikTok has a a rule that you cannot portray adult nudity unless it is for art or education or a couple of other things. I'm sitting there, I'm like, all right, that's art, that's education, I should be good to go. Because this wasn't even like a, a conspiracy type thing. This was literally just like, hey, they had giant snakes. Um, <laughs> right. That was it. Right. And I appealed it, and I was like, I'm going to win this appeal. I lost the appeal. And it was three days later. It took somebody three days to look at that and go, hmm, yeah, that that's pretty explicitly allowed. No. <laughs> <laughs> Like, oh, I, have you ever emailed them before? I have, and I, I've never gotten a response. Um, well, you know what's probably going on, though. I mean, think about how many TikToks are posted per day. Yeah. And think about how many potentially violate the guidelines and how many people appeal them. I guarantee at this point, like, I don't know what their resources are like, but I guarantee they're probably Dude, not enough to deal with it. It's a Chinese app. Yeah, exactly. Oh, okay. So you're, they're you're probably telling just, me that probably China just has, you know... China has people sitting there making Nikes for two cents an hour, and they can churn out billions of those, but they can't pay some people to sit and watch TikToks. Right. I, I, there has to be a better way. If it's, if it's if it's if it's people from China, oh, yeah, that's true. They probably part of the English. party. They see American decline. <laughs> yeah. Shh! Right. Careful! <laughs> careful what you say. Yeah, that's fair. Sorry. Um, the uh yeah the other thing like i was saying this earlier if somebody made an app that had absolutely no social media to it it was just the like exact way that tiktok's video creation app like application works and they just made it so you made a video and then you saved it to your phone mm. and then you could syndicate it to yeah. like byte clapper tiktok instagram i would pay yeah. i would pay money for it and not like a small amount of money if it was like if it was like fifteen bucks a month, I would pay it because I I make so much more than that on TikTok. Yeah. So like yeah. if if I got to syndicate that, then to Clapper, Byte, YouTube, TikTok, like, have I, you looked into whether or not that exists yet? I can't find something that actually has enough functionality. Um, Is this, but are, we, are we about to start another another? <laughs> well, there's there's a couple things in the Discord. I said earlier, I was like, I need I need a programmer because I have like three different ideas for yeah. apps, and I'm like. They're actually applicable. Yep. And I just know nothing about coding. And I tried to know something about coding. I took intro to coding in college. I took it once. And by once, I mean literally one lecture. Because I went and I was sitting there and it was a three-hour Monday night lecture. And the professor literally had to close her eyes when she talked to us. Because she was... she, she She physically could not look us in the eyes and speak to us. And I was like... I can't do four years of this. <laughs> no. And the reason I got into medieval studies in the first place was that I wanted to I wanted to be a video game designer, but I was always more into the story aspect. So I went to I sent an email to the history department. I was like, "Hey, could, who who should I talk to about King Arthur?" Because I was curious. And they said, "Oh, talk to you know Doctor Ben Hudson." And I 
I scheduled a meeting with him, and he was very, very cordial about it, very cool about it. He's an older guy. Uh, I went and I sat in his office, and we talked for two hours about King Arthur. And wow. this was my, my first semester of freshman year, and I needed to get my history gen eds out of the way. So I was like, all right, he teaches, I think it was medieval 108. And that was uh, like intro to medieval studies. And then there was also a 400 level. And at the time I was in the, the honors program and I was trying to, and if you took a 400 level as a freshman, it counted as an honors course. So I was like, oh, and I'll take his, you know, uh, medieval Britain course as well. Oh my God, my nose itches so much. That, um, if there is a staple of things I have to edit out, it's you turning aside and going, oh my God. <laughs> just try like just always itching your nose. You're just like, oh my god, it my itches, nose. man! It itches. It's just it's it, every video. I have to cut out at least ten or twenty of those. Oh my god! I, but, you got to get that checked, man. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> I don't know what it but, is. No, it's but my so point bad. was, I was, you know, I, I took his medieval two of his medieval studies courses, and I was like, wait, this is kind of cool. And then I decided, you know, I'm not going to be comp sci, I'm going to be econ. And I was like, but I'll, I'll take. I'll take more medieval study. And then I, I just went full throttle into it and, you know, <laughs> took eight medieval studies courses with the same professor. Uh, <laughs> it was <laughs> absolutely wild. Um, I hope he wrote one of your recommendations. He wrote my or... only recommendation letter. Good. Um, Good. Uh, I, That's great. Yeah, but, oh. But see, like, that was 90% of college for me was figuring out what the hell I was going to take courses on. Yep. Yeah. And then, like, the only thing that was worth it was that one professor. Like, I had other good professors, but I absolutely could have learned most of the stuff online. Yep. Uh, just in, uh, you know, keeping things on track and, and uh, moving, moving to time, did you have uh, any specific questions for Nick? Oh, yeah. Um, Palmyra. I wanted to talk about Palmyra. Because yeah. I what a lot of people don't seem to realize, and I ran into this when I was, like, talking about it, people think Maine is small. Because it's got it's got a small population. It's huge. The state of Maine is giant, <laughs> um, but you know, forty miles is forty miles. So you know, the the Palmyra thing, the Palmyra Wolves incident was two thousand six. Um, is it something? Did you still live in Maine at the time? I did. And I did. was it something that you heard about, or did you have to hear about it on Paranormal Witness, like the rest of us? Oh no, it was. It's very commonly talked about up here. It's just it's a still a story that's still. You know, parents share with their kids to this day because hmm. uh, you know, it's 15 years ago now. But I don't know if you saw the video I put out today. It never really dawned on me, and I don't know why. But we had a creature. Get I did see that. Yeah. And it was the same year. Yeah. Go ahead and tell the story. Same year and same time of month. So it's a creature called. They ended up calling it the Beast of Turner. Turner, Maine, is the town, mm -hmm. um, which happened to be the town over where I was living at the time. And prior to this, I want to say five, six months leading up to this day, there was dozens and dozens of reports of people's dogs, cats, even um, cattle coming up just mauled. Mm -hmm. They would find them mauled in their yards. And then one day this woman called and reported that she had hit what she thought was a dog. Um, and when the authorities went out there, he was very soon followed up by journalists and all kinds of media people because nobody knew what this thing was. It just, it's a very, there's some pictures of it online, mm -hmm. um, but it looks to me, I don't know, to me it looks like they took the pictures a couple days after the decaying process mm -hmm. had began, um, but you can still clearly see it had big, bulged out eyes, it had extremely broad shoulders, like almost as broad as a bear mm -hmm. when it was, uh, when they kind of like, I can't find it online anymore, but they at one point... They didn't bring it to a taxidermist, but they they brought it back to life, basically. They kind of resurrected the, the body of this mm -hmm. thing, and it was just massive. They estimated that it weighed over 120 pounds. I'm going to say, as a lifelong hunter in Maine, that it was more like 150, mm -hmm. but it was a big animal. It was a very big animal, and um, it was just strange. Was, I, to have it happen right around the same time as that Martin family story, yeah. to, to me, it's just so intriguing because my theory is that it's a young yeah. version of whatever they had on their property that, that's just the first thing that comes to my mind is it's whatever they saw but younger yeah and, and just uh, just yeah, for like for reference like an adult 
husky or German shepherd ranges from like 80 to 110 pounds. So that's exactly when you think about like, and, and think about one of those standing on its hind legs. Like a lot of people will think of a husky in terms of like, it's, you know, standing on all fours. If you stick a dog that size on its hind legs, it's as tall as a person. Like easily. Oh, absolutely. So, uh, you know, absolutely. 150 pound dog like creature, wolf like creature standing up will be about six, six and a half feet tall. And when you yeah. line that up with what gets reported from Palmyra, it's, um, they said seven to eight feet tall. So it would make sense if it was younger. Um, on top of that, I did get sent a video from, or not a video, a photo from somebody. And I'm trying to remember where they said it was, but it was out in the Midwest. Um, and they, it was something that they, that they shot while hunting and it looked kind of like a dog but had some deer features and it, it the head was wrong that's the only way i can describe it yeah. and they said they called the game wardens they were like what's this and the game wardens came out and basically took it away and said nothing else to them they couldn't they were like we can't identify yeah. that and they drove it off never heard from again i have the picture like and i reverse image searched it found nothing which means that this guy sent me an authentic picture that he said it was like his right. cousin took it um and then, of course, you, you lump that in with, like, chupacabra sightings and uh, it, it, people seeing black dogs all over the U.S., all over England, um, and then the Beast of Gavadin in France. And it, that, that's another one of these things. When I And I was having so much trouble when I was trying to do this video, which is currently one of our best-performing videos on YouTube. Um, but I was having so much trouble thinking about it. I was like, on the one hand, this actually fits really well with a lot of like black dog mythology and stuff like that but on the other hand I can't find anything other than the episode of Paranormal Witness and Mr. Ballin's video right. on it and the thing is I, I, I think Mr. Ballin does a great job with all of his content and it, it, it is my assumption that he does his research and like doesn't talk about stuff unless he, he thinks that whoever was reporting it was being genuine um and so I, that, him talking about it lends a lot of credibility to it for me, for me. But I, outside of like locals from Palmyra and the area around it, I couldn't find anything. And if you looked it up on like it, where we're from, you know, there's a, and I brought this up in one of my videos, there's a diner on Route 23, just outside of Valley Forge Park called the G Lodge. There was one scene of the movie The Happening filmed there literally one yeah. scene and it's like all they talk about yep <laughs> and we yep. know the owner personally and yeah. it's like <laughs> yeah. yeah there's memorabilia all over the place and it's not like the happening is one of those movies where you really want to like promote that you yeah. were shot there but oh right. Right. that establishment is just an entertaining time oh it's a fun time oh uh, um, we, we should do a video on the we, G Lodge. We should. <laughs> Just lore on <laughs> the G Lodge instead of the Lore Lodge. Uh, or do we should buy the G Lodge and rename we, it the Lore Lodge. We should, and then do a podcast from it. That would be hilarious. Yeah. Oh but my uh, God. and on top of that, like Chadsford, um, Pennsylvania, there's uh, I think the village was shot there, like in the woods. It's funny oh. if you watch if you watch the village, M Night Shyamalan's The Village. At the end of the movie, with that big twist ending, you know, sorry if I'm about to spoil this for anybody, but the movie's been out for 20 years, like, sorry. Spoilers, just um, in case yeah, Spoiler matters. alert, uh, at the end of the movie, you know, after this, it, the entire thing appears to take place in the 1700s, and then the girl stumbles out of the woods and onto, I, it's literally a road I've driven down in Chad's Ford. Yeah. Onto just a modern road in southeastern Pennsylvania. And that's the whole thing, is that she's been a part of this cult. cult. Um, her whole life. Right. And so, like, you know, you'll see, like, the, the village was filmed here, and, you know, Devil was filmed here. For those who don't know, M. Night Shyamalan's kind of a big deal around here. <laughs> like, Well, I think it's safe to say he's kind of a big deal in general, considering... He is, but, like, in the Philly area especially. Oh, yeah, well, no, no, because he lives here and he shoots... Like, he is the film equivalent of Stephen King, but instead of Maine, it's Philly. Yeah, and exactly. He right, films right. all of his stuff here... Except for, I guess, his recent one, which was, uh, what was that, old? It was yeah, called? Yeah, and nobody watched it, because it wasn't shot in Philly. Yeah, um, that's fair. He didn't have his simps. Uh, 
Yeah. Uh, I kind of want to see it. It looked interesting. You can't just abandon this city, Aiden. <laughs> uh, I was that really just motivated me to do the line from Green Lantern. And look, really look what happened to Carson that, Wentz. Look what happened to Carson Wentz. Um, what do you yeah. mean? <laughs> I'm still mad about you it. Mean, you, mean, you mean you mean you mean you mean Mister Glassbones and Paper Skin? To, uh, better than Mister Can't Throw the Ball and just runs around pretending he's Michael Vick. Uh, um, yeah, at least he's on the field during the Jalen season. Jalen hurts my feelings. <laughs> is his name. Um, yeah, he should have kept. He should have kept the oh, number yeah. two because that's all he is. Uh, <laughs> what happened? What happened to Sudfeld? So bring in Sudfeld. I would, I, Sudfeld. I would prefer Sudfeld. I would prefer to watch Nate Sudfeld. Nick, I don't know if you're familiar with Sudfeld, but it was was it during the uh, the Super Bowl that he did that he was a, a third string quarterback, and he they put him in and he ran the ball in for a touchdown. As, I don't think that was during the Super Bowl. It, it was at some point that season. I can't remember when it was. Yeah. But they put in the third string quarterback and had him run the ball in. They were at like the seven yard line. The man, the and he man's ran the like, ball in this is touchdown. totally like, it we've gone hilarious. so far off we were the rails right now. Filled. But th- this man, in his career for the Eagles, I think played a, like through a total of like 40 passes and he made like 80% of them. Who's Sudfeld? Sudfeld. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, yeah. he threw for like four touchdowns and he ran for one. He has like. It, he, <laughs> yeah, his stats are low, but his stats are fantastic. Yeah, um, and then it, I was gonna say it wasn't during the Super Bowl. No, I'm a no. Patriots fan, I know every play of that. I was gonna oh, say. Oh, so yeah. do we. <laughs> I can't remember when it was though, because I remember everybody went crazy when he did it, and I, I just yeah. I equate that level of like intensity with that game. So, you know, yeah, that was quarterback did catch a pass in that game, but it wasn't so. Mm. No, it was it was our Lord and Savior, Big Dick Nick. Um, Ooh, yeah. We have two statues of sports stars in Philadelphia, and only one of them is a real person. Um, <laughs> the other one is Rocky Balboa. Uh, <laughs> that was one of my favorite sports moments, was when the Vikings fans came to Philly for the playoff game, and uh, they dressed the Rocky Balboa statue in all this Vikings gear, and then proceeded to get blown out <laughs> by Nick Foles. It was like 37 to 7. <laughs> I was like, you don't don't mess with our statue, man. Like, uh, but yeah. Back really quick. Back before we go to super chats. Back to the Palmyra Wolves thing. Um, so do do you have any I like? Have, have you been to Palmyra at all? Yes. And do you know where the house is? I do. So the house exists. Oh yeah. Because I looked. I looked for hours. On Google Maps, I'm like scrolling. I'm like, where's the house? I'm like looking for access yeah, roads. Trees. And it, yeah. so is it like, it, is it something that like, do they just not like to talk about it or what? Because it's just not on the internet. Well, yeah. And like I mentioned in that video I put up today, for some reason, whenever something like that happens up here, it's just totally disregarded. Like when that creature was hit, right? You got journalists over there reporting on mm-hmm. it. And the game wardens, the game wardens, all the local biologists, everybody refused to go look at this body and try to identify what it was. They wouldn't even go out there, mm-hmm. which is just so bizarre. Um, and it's much like Mr. Ballin explained that how the cop reacted in the Martin family story in Palmyra. Mm-hmm. He wouldn't even, you know, he just said go inside yeah. and be okay. And that's which, basically how we're raised. You know, I don't know. It's strange. It's so weird. And, and you gotta wonder if that's just like... Because on the one hand, you know... The, I talk about the national parks thing all the time, um, but on the other hand, like that's just y- you wonder at what point you're looking at like conventional folk wisdom. Like, if you see this, just ignore it, um, just stay inside, right. because there's right. there's certainly things like that in communities where it's like you know they acknowledge that something's out there, but they don't really talk about it, and it's just weird to yeah. me that like you have something like that happen and you wouldn't make like for me, and may- maybe this is because like I'm. I see everything as a means of making money, but for me, if I like was the family that owned the house, I would I would immediately be like, all right, this is no longer a house. This is a bed and breakfast where you sign a very intense legal waiver, um, and and then I would just Absolutely. let people stay there. But instead, it's just like totally shut down. Like we're not going to talk about this. Just nothing. Just don't. And I just think that's weird. I I don't know. Oh. Fun little sidebar: the la- the house from the last Conjuring movie. The family that bought it lives 15 minutes from me, 
And that's exactly what they did with it. You, you are just, like, swimming in it. Come here, buddy. No way. Really, yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm in. But, yeah, they, uh, that's exactly what they did with it. They rented out for investigations. All kinds of paranormal YouTubers have gone there and yeah. spent the night and stuff like that. So. I want to go to the cold but, house. You know, I don't know if you saw... I tried to... I tried to get an image over to you on TikTok, which is just yeah, it's it's almost impossible. Itself. Yeah, it's a nightmare. Well, now you can just send it to me on Discord. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, there you go. But we had something cross. And so my house is positioned about 50 yards off the road. Mm-hmm. But behind us is a big field. I'm on an 80-acre piece of property. Oh, you lucky dog. So it's <laughs> a big field and then, and then a very lucky. And then a river. Um, oh. And this thing... The second this big storm came in, it was like a beautiful day, and then all of a sudden, just the craziest wind we've had all year. And I'm in my room recording a TikTok, funny <laughs> enough, and my, I hear my wife yell to me. She says, Nick, there's somebody walking across our field. I'm thinking to myself, why in the world would anybody be... First of all, there's nobody that lives around here, mm-hmm. and why would anybody be in my field right now? Oh, yeah, yeah I saw... It like I think I saw this. Outside. So... I go out, I go over to the bathroom and she says, who is that? And my daughter was standing there with us. So I had to be very careful how mm. I reacted. Mm. And I'm like, I said, honey, that's, that's not a somebody. I'm not sure what that is, but so it used to be a hay field. It used to be, you know, a cattle ranch mm-hmm. and mm. um, the grass is like four feet tall. And when I tell you this thing was every bit of eight feet tall, and I'm certainly on the lower end of the spectrum here, it was, it's just, it drives me crazy because, you know, you guys know exactly what I talk about when I say we see this stuff all over YouTube, TikTok, we see these pictures, and it's always like, well, why didn't you just, you know, get a better picture of it? Or, yeah, you just it's can't. Always, it's always blurry. It's always yeah. whatever. So I, I'm consciously thinking of that. I'm like, okay, I'm not going to be that guy. I'm going to get a great image of this thing, and you're not going to be able to tell me I didn't see it. <laughs> but I'm on an iPhone 8, and... The creature itself was probably 400 yards away from the back of the house, <clears throat> and it's downpouring rain, so the, the quality is all distorted because of the rain and everything else. But regardless, as soon as the storm passed, I did get it on video, long story short, but you can't see what it is. Yeah. You just see a, a black line walking across the screen. As soon as the storm passed, I geared up and grabbed some weapons, and I went down there because I wanted to walk in the path that I saw it walk mm-hmm. and have my wife have my wife record me doing that mm-hmm. just for a comparison so I did that and I looked like an ant <laughs> where this thing you could see like six feet of it sticking out of the grass yeah so I remember six foot one yeah I, I don't know I, I saw your I saw your video on it and I just remember looking at it and at first I was like ah it's it's really hard to tell and it, then I kind of I paused it and I looked at it and I was like Wait, you're a lot closer to that like tree or whatever than that thing is, Way and that closer. thing looks easily twice as tall as you. <laughs> like, right. I was a good forty yards closer to my house than it was because once I got down there, I'm not gonna lie to you, I was alone. Yeah. I was in a hurry to do my business and get back to the house. Yeah, understandably uh, so, man. Whew. But once I got back up there and looked at the pictures, I'm like, oh man, I'm way closer to the house than it was. And like Aiden just said, it literally looks at least double my size. Yeah. So. I don't know. It's pretty crazy. I'm not sure, not sure what it was, but the other part of it is the distance that it traveled in about 60 seconds because I barely had time to get my phone out and record it. And the terrain is just once you get out there, it's so rough. It's mm-hmm. all big knolls and holes and all kinds of stuff. And the the walk that it did in 60 seconds, it takes me at least 10 minutes. So I just, it was not human, whatever it was, yeah. and it was certainly on two legs. <laughs> I don't know. I just wish I was able to get a better quality picture of it. Yeah, it's everyone's always like, "Oh, why isn't there a better picture?" Like, what? Do you, you know, I, I was out doing a photo shoot for these for these shirts with with my ex girlfriend, who is now my friend and apparently my photographer. Um, <laughs> we like to keep things complicated here. Yeah, exactly. Why why make things simple? Uh, shout out to Jess. She's she's awesome. She has a photography page on Instagram. Check it out. It's, uh, Jess Ma Jessica Ma Photography. Jess Ma Photography. Um, I don't know. Check don't my know. Instagram. I you know, and go go look at the most recent post and go give her a follow because she deserves it. She's awesome, um, and she took pictures of me for free. Um, so, uh, <laughs> but yeah, just a, just a little shout out. Anybody there. would take pictures of you for That's, free. Yeah, I don't know about that. Um, but she was. I, the the reason I bring this up is I uh, we were climbing around these boulders in St. Pete's for those of you who are from southeastern Pennsylvania, and she was talking about how she 
probably would have been moving a lot faster and whatever if she wasn't carrying a three thousand dollar camera. And I was like, three thousand dollars? Oh yeah. Like, and oh my God. and when you look at the quality of the pictures, you're like, it suddenly made sense to me. I'm like, oh, this is why. It's and because to get like these high quality pictures, you need a three thousand dollar camera. That's just the camera. The yeah. lenses are even more expensive. Yeah, so I'm like, oh, yep. you know, now now it all makes sense why the pictures are always stupid. Now, that does not excuse the Bigfoot people who go out and try to get pictures of Bigfoot, and they're like, you know, sorry, it's grainy. I was using an old soup can with a piece of film strapped to the inside. <laughs> like, it's and a like, pinhole on the other. If, if your goal is to capture images of Bigfoot, I, I don't know, maybe consider investing in a nice, you know, DSLR at least. Like... You know, I, I think my GoPro could get better footage of Bigfoot than a lot of these people get. Yeah. But, right. yeah. All right. Uh, but it is 8 o'clock, and you know what that means. Oh, and I do know what that, that means. That means it's time for Super Chats. That's time for Super Chats. If I had a button that did a thing, I'd press I'm that sure button. I'm sure we can get a button. Thing. Uh, yeah, I'll set that up. Uh, I'm, I'm not good with buttons. I can never find them. Uh, we need a button, for sure. Yes, we do. Um, okay, so for those Archie, of you whining. unfamiliar, or for those of you who need the reminder, uh, and for those of you who already know, sorry for the repetition, uh, <laughs> now is the time that we answer questions. Generally, it seems that they are mostly from Super Chats, uh, because Super Chats get priority because, well, those who decide to pay uh, so generously to ask a question or make a comment. This is a capitalist podcast. Yes, you know, we, we, we acknowledge the fact that people are spending their hard-earned money on us. We very much appreciate it, and I think it's mutually beneficial. Anyway, it's, we've already got kind of like OnlyFans, but more sexy. <laughs> yes, because <laughs> we're here. And more now sexy than OnlyFans. the sexiness has multiplied no because question. Nick is joins, joining us yeah, this morning. Exactly. So this evening, I, I wish I, 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 was, I wish I could grow facial hair like that. The same, honestly. I, I haven't shaved in like two weeks. Uh, yeah, I if I could ever grow facial hair that's even like halfway that decent, I'll be a very happy you, man. You've got a, a nice, smooth baby face. I do. I look like a child, but it's fine. Anyway, so we do have three. Ah, no, no, no. Nah, nah, it just makes you a silver yeah. fox. It's fine. You're, you're entering your, your gray fox years. Silver yes, fox years. The gray, uh, is gray, good. Fox. gray is good. Gray is good. For those of you who get that ancient reference, well done. I'm gonna be um, honest, I don't. What's that? I don't get that reference. It's from Wall Street with um, Michael Douglas, who plays Gordon Gecko. It's not gonna happen for me. It says greed is good. <laughs> you're not getting there. Anyway. <laughs> You're not that guy, pal. You're not that guy. Are you that guy? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> anyway, here we are. Into the den of Super Chats. Also, you don't just have to ask us questions. Feel free to ask Nick's questions. Uh, I would kind of encourage that, especially considering he is our guest. And he's only here for tonight. Exactly, at least for now. If he decides that he could tolerate us enough after this and wants to come back again, we will more than happily have him. Um, but, you know, we're not going to put that pressure on him I'm right gonna now. I'm going to become nocturnal anyway. trying to do this podcast while I'm in Wales. Oh, yeah, you are. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, that's right. We're just going to be, like, shotgunning Red Bulls at midnight. <laughs> we might be able to do it a little earlier in the day. Well, I don't know. Yet. Maybe we'll see. We, we can make a poll. Or large sponsored by Bang. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. <laughs> Yeah, uh, screw Bang. Let's do Four Loco. <laughs> yes, I'm down. Um, I will say, I don't know. Four last... Lodge. <laughs> What's that? Four Lodge? Oh, God. Loco we, Lodge? We need to put that on a t shirt. Lore Loco? Lore Loco. Loco Lore. I will say, I, Loco am, Lore. I am commissioning Wait. a sexy Wendigo. No, no, that's our version of Drunk History, is Loco, Loco Lore. Lore. Yeah. It's just we pound Four Locos and do, like, Lore stuff. That, that will end yeah. horribly. No. Oh, yeah. I, I, di I did commission. Um, a uh, sexy Wendigo. So there will be a Wendosi shirt coming. Wait. At what point are we going to make Wendigo body pillows? Oh, good God. <laughs> oh, good Lord. Oops, oh, sorry, Archie. The oh, Industrial God. Revolution and its consequences. Uh, the <laughs> very detrimental society. <laughs> okay, anyway. Super Chats. Yes, we have Super Chats. Uh, so the first one is from Glass of Water for $5. Thanks, Thank you very much. Water. Uh, also, welcome back, officially. Um, when are you two going ghost hunting? When we have enough money and time. Yeah, um, I would love to go money. to the Colt House down in, like, Chadsford, Glen Mills. Um, my main worry there is not ghosts, but rather the private armed security the DuPonts have hired. Oh? Uh, so, if we do that, um, we're going to need, like, some 
like permission from the sheriff or something. Oh, I thought I thought you were gonna say that's when we're gonna get the lore crew together and we will outnumber them. But that's just me <laughs> assuming where Our, your mentality will I, go. I think if we if we were to try and get together uh, the lore crew and arm them and go to the cult house, I think we might be violating federal mustering laws. Probably. <laughs> um, which I really don't have a problem with, if I'm being honest. But not for that. <laughs> uh, yes, like, I, I'm thinking, like, you know, we, we violate federal mustering laws to, like, go get the Windowsy. Like, to kill it, yeah. you mean? Yes, sure. That. <laughs> or, or to, like, yes. go save people in Afghanistan or something. I don't know. Something. I'd be like I would be game for that. Yeah, let's do no, that. We, we retake the Holy Land. Um, which is not Afghanistan, but... I was uh, going to say, yeah, that's that's not quite our holy land. We, yeah, it was just, uh, I don't know. Um, anyway. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Moving so, along. Yeah, so to answer your question succinctly, uh, when we have the money, <laughs> and also the time. Which will probably not be within the next month, so sometime in late 2022. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Keep an eye out. We'll make some posters in a trailer. I'll try uh, to go to, like, some haunted castles while I'm in the UK. You should. I guess you'll have to bring, like, a rubber band gun. Yeah. Or, like, <laughs> I'll, a I'll find a I'll find a Scottish version of Aiden. <laughs> um, it's just going to be <laughs> actual... Three of us meet up at the Conjuring House. Oh, I would be down oh. for that. Is that a thing you can do? It's kind of right in between. Where, where is it? Yeah, yeah. It's in uh, Jersey. It's in Jersey? Is it really? Yeah. Oh, God, that's an easy drive. Oh, we have to do that. I mean, it, you gotta go to dirty Jersey, but, like... I was just there for two weeks. I can... I'll, I'll That explains it. why you smell so bad right now. Yeah, it's just, you know... The, you can feel the stink coming off you. Yeah. It's... 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 Bad. It's terrible. Dawn dish soap usually helps relatively well. Anyway. Um... But I would actually be down for that. Let's talk about that. Yeah, yeah, we um, should. I thought uh, it was crazy. It's... They're, they're booked through the end of 2022. Yeah, but, That's but, how, like, but we're special. Yeah, we'll say, hey, we're famous. <laughs> yeah. I guess we book, yeah, it no, for 20, book it for 2023, boys. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> oh, jeez. All right, next super chat. Uh, Commander Canada 213. Uh, oh, this is from him saying earlier, went through a uh, bad breakup. What did I miss? Commander Canada, I am very sorry to hear that you went through a bad breakup. Um... I don't know if it was a guy or a girl. I'm not going to judge because I really don't care either way. I well, love it's his Canada, love. so he's probably um, gay. I'm not going to comment on that. <laughs> um, Just some friendly joshing between continental siblings. Yes. Um, <laughs> he. At least, at, at least you're friendly with the Canadians, whereas you just downright hate anybody with a British accent. <laughs> not no English you, English accent. Okay, fair enough. Um, yeah, I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, whoever they were was a bitch. Uh, they didn't deserve you, and I'm glad you were away from that shit show. And we love you, and I hope you're okay. Anyway, next super chat. Uh, unless Nick has any words of, of love and, and, and comfort. Uh, I think you covered it. Perfect, yeah. Um, Will S. super chatted for $5. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, uh, oh, hang on. I got jumped down to the bottom. Uh, the place I work at in Wisconsin has something in the woods mad at us. An old oak tree used to have a shrine of bones around it. Should we be worried? It sounds like the Lorax is angry. Okay, how the hell does the Lorax keep getting brought up to me? Do you not remember last week when we had Isaiah on and yeah, we realized... Yeah, I, I do remember. We realized that the Wendigo yeah. is the Lorax. You had me cracking up with that. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that, was, glad. that was so much fun. I had so I'm glad much you fun with him. That. Uh, that was very funny. It was, <laughs> yeah. Uh, just the image what, of a giant Lorax running after you in the woods. I, I'm just kidding. So that if I, if I was better VFX, I would do have, it myself. They used to have an oak tree with a circle of bones. Uh, yes, it said an old oak tree used to have a shrine of bones around it. I guess that means they are no longer there. Yeah. The, so the final sentence is: Should we be worried? I mean, I. I I would not. I, that's yeah. That's definitely not like a good sign. <laughs> I don't know. I I would say perhaps go and like, uh, you know, it wouldn't hurt to maybe get together a few people and go apologize to whatever's there, and be like, we're sorry. Please haunt the people responsible and not us. <laughs> that's a smart plan. But yeah, the, at the very least, like if you're worried that you've got something haunting you, um. 
because you removed the Bone Circle Shrine from the old oak tree outside of town. Have you watched a horror movie? Like, who, who was like, yeah, that old oak tree with the Bone Shrine. Let's screw with that. Yeah, that seems like a good plan. Those bones don't belong. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, no, no, leave the Bone Circle. <laughs> what kind of silly goose was doing this so the other uh, night? Yeah. Huh? So I don't know. Maybe maybe go uh, like. No, definitely don't hold a seance. I'm never going to ever suggest anybody hold a seance. When are we but holding a seance? We're not holding a seance. We're holding a but seance. But go and, you know, I don't know, leave leave some, like, some peonies, maybe some sunflowers, some, some, some nice flowers. Can we get an interview with an edible one of those? arrangement. Wait, can we get an interview with one of those, like, Brooklyn Wiccan girls? Probably. Because, like, I feel like that would be a very entertaining conversation. Specifically I'm watching the interact their accent with the whole time. What's that? I'm just going to mimic their accent the whole time. You realize not everybody in Brooklyn has that accent, right? I do not care what you tell me about Brooklyn. I will make this accent whenever I talk about it. At this point, it's more just people from listen, like you, Long Island who went to the college in New York. Listen, and now it's just Long like, Island. It's it's extremely gentrified, <laughs> and it's it's there's a lot of a lot of people that didn't grow up in Brooklyn now. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> anyway. Um, next super chat is from Is Long. Uh, I believe that short's for I- Izzy, but it, you know, I I just wanted to get in there before you made the immediate joke. Um, what joke? Is Long? I don't understand. What's funny about that? Okay. Uh, <laughs> humongous what? Sorry. <laughs> uh, and there are children here. Oh God! I mean, probably not. <laughs> anyway, I was just going to say, when did you become a Discord mod? Uh, anyway, I love you Discord mods, but, it's, it's, you know, just a little bit of banter. Anyway, um, Islong asks, any idea of creeps that would be lurking around the Massachusetts, New England area in general? Yeah, Patriots fans. Oh, we're speaking <laughs> with one right now. Okay, it was it was right there. It was right there. <laughs> Tom Brady and his Tom Tom Brady is lurking, trying to kiss people's sons. Um, wait, yeah, really quickly. <laughs> thoughts on Tom Brady leaving the Patriots? Uh, totally off topic, but I'm curious. Uh, I'm a Bucks fan until for a <laughs> No, wait. So, yeah, Cam or Cam or Mac? Like, which would you rather? I, also, I don't care. But, um, <laughs> this is literally like and this, is, this is the exact same thing as me with the Colts right now. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. <laughs> I have, you have to understand. I have I played football for eleven years. I have bled New England for mm. my since I was old enough to understand what football was. And uh, yeah, my loyalty left with number twelve. Oh my god, Man. I feel that. That that's is how it was with Carson Wentz. Um, <laughs> I am amazed at how much you cling to Carson Wentz. I really am. Uh, he is a good. He's a good dude. I like him. As my a person. F- my favorite player on that team is yeah. easily Boston um, Scott, the absolute tank. I think my current favorite Eagle is Zach Ertz. Zach Ertz is fantastic. Yeah. He's an awesome guy. Yeah. yeah. Zach- oh God, Kelsey, yeah, the Kelsey's Sultan of fantastic. Swag. <laughs> the Sultan of Swag himself. I watch that speech from the Super Bowl. Yeah. Championship parade all the time. Archie is chewing on my. Foot. I was just gonna say, what's going I'm on being down there? Mauled by a giant pomeranian. Um, <laughs> that's I. I mean, he was. You saw him on the screen earlier. That's what he looks like. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, do we have more super chats? Uh, yeah, we do. Uh, the next one was from Commander Canada two one three for two dollars. He said, "Y'all listen to my audio yet?" I'm gonna assume the answer is probably no. I have. Oh, there you go. I I just have not responded. I will get back to you this week. I have been so swamped doing like actual like legal stuff and business stuff and also immigration stuff. <laughs> Archie, for the love of God. Uh. I love that he just, like, stopped and just looked at the wall. Like, he's looking at a blank wall right now. <laughs> there are... Ab- for once, he had thoughts. Yes. Uh, he okay. was sentient for about three seconds. Um. <laughs> I, I am thoroughly entertained by that. Okay, next Super Chat is from Pyre Z for $5. Thank you very much. Uh, oh, great milk master, would you consider selling Windy Boy milk? Also, I will totally buy a Wendigo body pillow. <laughs> yes, I knew that idea was going to be I a hot one. I hate everything about that super chat. Uh, Nick- also, I just realized we never actually answered the question about New England. Um, oh, yeah. And, and like, Massachusetts. Uh, obviously, uh, as we've heard from Nick here, there's something going on with, like, giant black wolf dog creature things roaming around which is not what you want to hear at any point but um i i think it seems like the common wisdom here is like if if you see it just 
if if what people have seem to have decided up there over the generations is like just lock your doors and stay inside if you see that I, I think that's probably the best wisdom um you are technically still in Algonquin territory up there uh Although the Algonquin and the uh, Mi'kmaq and Beothuk tribes uh, did not get along super well, uh, there was actually some warring going on between like the Iroquois and the Mi'kmaq and all that uh, back in the back in the early days of um, you know American colonization. And so uh, I wouldn't I I would say pretty much anything that you uh, find. In, in those tribes is probably uh, something to be concerned about. So probably something Windy Boy esque again. I think that the the Wendigo is probably a manifestation of a collective cultural memory of something scary. Uh, sort of how like I talked about with the Uncanny Valley. But I, I do have to be careful to say that there is the specific legend of and tradition of the Wendigo, as well as what I think it could be from a like cultural anthropology standpoint and a historical standpoint so i just want to make sure that that's clear that i'm not saying that the wendigo is something i'm saying that this is my take on where it came from uh please don't get mad at me <laughs> please don't yell at me uh but yeah so and then uh, i think the the main the big tribe up there was the wabanaki i'm probably pronouncing that wrong but i think that's the the native tribe that was most in control of maine uh, yep. yep. So, to, just to... I'm actually part black. Oh, really? Yeah. Damn. Hmm. Everyone gets to be part native but me. You know a lot more about it than I do. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> Alright, what was the next? Uh, the next one is from Noah Lee for $2. Thank you very much. He says, Florida man, I am ashamed of, I'm ashamed of Tom Brady being here. <laughs> I guess there are those that would have those feelings. Um, yeah. But also, he, he's probably the best quarterback in Florida right now. Right? He's probably the best He's probably the best quarterback in the Southeast right now. Yeah. I'm trying to think who... Nick, thoughts on that comment? I... I you don't want it. You don't want it. Uh, I, uh, he raised me. <laughs> That's my guy. I'm just that's, that's my guy. I'm just trying to think it. about it like I love that. That's who who have you got in that region of the US? You've got Trevor Lawrence, um Jamise Winston. D- who the he- Teddy Bridgewater? Right? Maybe? No. He's in Carolina. Yeah, so Teddy Bridgewater. Like no. I- I'm forgetting uh who's And then uh, Who's the Dolphins? Winston, yeah, it's t- Tua oh, Tua for the Dolphins. Tua, yeah. The Eagles picked up Minshew. Which I I kind of hope that Minshew like gets to go in and just absolutely ball out because that <laughs> would be that guy, so funny and I love his mustache oh, yeah. for sure I I would I, I don't care I know he's on the team the second they start printing Minshew Eagles jerseys I'm getting one um, that's fantastic I am I am all for it I also feel terrible for Nick Foles because he only is good as a backup I don't I don't understand what's going on there but like. The man only performs when he's not the starting quarterback. <laughs> it is yeah. odd, but uh, but to the Florida man, you you embrace these next couple of years because because you will never do well leaves, again. <laughs> you, you guys are going to be so broke that it's going to be a rough decade. Whatever. Yeah, <laughs> that's a great way to put it. I love that. Um, I believe the next one was from Will S again. Let me just make sure that that's the yes. So the next Super Chat was from Will S. again for $5. He's following up on the Bones story. Mm-hmm. He says, We moved the Bones, and that whole corner of the woods has been wrong since. Also, well, Put the Bones back, man. Also, the DNR said there might be native burial mounds on the property, too. Oh, good. Great. Great. <laughs> Wonderful. You guys, was your goal to make as many bad decisions as possible here? Yeah, you, you are That's batting so a thousand. Like, like do you, if you still have the Bones, put them back. Also, yeah, what'd you do with the bones? Yeah, what did you do with the bones? Like, what? I need more to this story. <laughs> yeah. Write us but an yeah, email. Uh, Give us the whole story. Yeah, but definitely, if you still have the bones, put them back. If you don't still have the bones, uh, go, go, like, say you're sorry, at least. Be like, hey, oops. Yeah. Like, hey, we were dumb. Um, here you go. Yeah. Like and I leave said. something new, like, that matters. Because they'll know. 
Also, I was trying to remember what uh, the the flowers from Ring Around the Rosie were for a second. I don't know why my first thought was Algernon. Go ahead. Um, I was trying because I was thinking like, what are what are some flowers that are generally associated with like warding off death and bad spirits? Um, and for whatever reason, rather than having the like Ring Around Rosie's pocket full of posies thing, in my head, I got the Roly Poly Oly theme song. <laughs> what? Um, Wait, why? What? I I think. It, that's one of those Mandela effect things. Like, yeah. yeah. The show Roly Poly Oly was like definitely a thing, and nobody remembers it. <laughs> I gotta look this up because it sounds familiar, but I I could not put any form of like physical image. It's like in the my yellow head robot that. dudes, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like early two thousands animation, like. Oh, yeah, I remember this show. Whenever I, whenever I bring it up, people are like, wait, I remember that. And I'm like, yeah, that That's... was a a thing that happened. <laughs> that little dude's adorable. Yeah, right. Hang on, look at this guy. It's like the, the movie, and like the movie Robots. Yeah, I'll show you as well. <laughs> yep. Oh, yeah, I remember. <laughs> yeah, this dude's adorable. Oh, what a, what a guy. What an absolute guy. Archie heard what an absolute guy and thought we were talking about him. Naturally, because he right also now. is one. <laughs> um... Okay, uh, the next one, I believe, was from, uh, I just want to make sure that I'm getting, yes, from Grand Canada 213 for $2, thank you, sir. Uh, he says, I'm going to 1v1 a Wendigo with a toy lightsaber, zero cap. Um, good luck. Good luck. Yeah. Uh, next is from just Chloe. What? Just like yeah, just record it, yes. Listen to Nick, record just it. Record it. Yes. Um... Uh, Chloe White for one ninety nine. Thank you very much. Says I grew up in the Appalachian Mountains. Hashtag spooky. Emailed y'all. We, uh, we will take a look. Yeah, I've we been have a lot of emails to go through. Yeah, I've just been really backed up. I'm technically doing four jobs right now. I, I just got to hire an intern. Mm, not yet. We're not there. I would love to eventually, but we're not there yet uh, financially. Um, but yeah, it's I, an I intern. You don't pay them. That's the whole point. <laughs> they get paid an experience. We're still under 20k subscribers. It's it's not slavery. If it's, it's... DiGiorno. <laughs> I like it. I, thank you. Whoosh! <laughs> that is a tweet I wish I had the balls to post. <laughs> It's not slavery. It's the that would go. That would be good on the True Facts account. <laughs> yes, yes, it really would be. Oh, I mean, God. yeah, it's. I my. It's one, not slavery. It's DiGiorno. One, like <laughs> one of my favorite things ever. I will. I will never forget this sentence until I die. But seeing the tweet that you wrote that says there are several differences between a plate of a Spaniard and a plate of eggs Benedict. <laughs> I will remember that statement <laughs> until the day I die, and I wish I knew why. I just uh, find it so funny. For context, I ran a Twitter account that might still actually be on Twitter. I don't know if I ever deleted it, called, like, True Facts with Tone. And it had a picture of Rick Steves as the profile picture. <laughs> and I would just tweet <laughs> phrases that were true, but also meaningless. Like, all told, several things happened in the 1980s. Yes. Um, there are several differences between a... Plate of Eggs Benedict and the Spaniard. Um, nobody told Reagan to free the slaves. Like, uh, all all true statements, but also completely worthless knowledge. Like, yeah. <laughs> absolutely no point that. to it. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh. Okay, so next super chat from uh, Thuring Wet Hill 93 for $2. Thank you very much. Uh, says, you guys are absolutely fantastic. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. I'm including Nick in that as well because he's here, and I believe that he is also fantastic. Um, next you one. Hear that, mom? <laughs> <laughs> you can clip that. Uh, <laughs> you can clip that. Uh, Noah Lee for two dollars. Thank you very much. Says, um, oh, he's responding to you about the um, the, the Patriots thing, I believe. Uh, he says, born a Colts fan, brainwashed to hate the Brady. <laughs> so fair. Yeah. I feel like everybody was kind of brainwashed to hate Brady outside. Yeah. Also, he seems more likable now. He does. I, I don't know what it is, but, like... Because if you're not a Pats fan, you hate the Pats. For yeah, for 20 yeah, years in New true. England, he just looked like all he cared about was winning Super Bowls and didn't have a personality. And then you see him, like, at the Super Bowl parade in Tampa, like, on a boat, drunk off his ass, and you're like, oh, he's a human. Exactly. Like, And I think since he moved down south, he stopped making out with his son. So... 
well. Which is weird, <laughs> considering it's the South. Um, we, we, we are equal opportunity offenders on this show. I, I, can, I can and will insult everybody. Um, As you should. Like, for example, it, just off the top of my head, Pittsburgh, why do you need so many bridges? Because there's three Have rivers. less bridges. You don't need all of them. There's three I was rivers. looking at a picture of Pittsburgh, because somebody brought it up that they had that many bridges. It's too many. It's too it's many It's enough bridges. bridges. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> exactly. Uh, you know, I, I will I will attack every single part of Pennsylvania, except whatever... Steel City. Except whatever part yeah. I'm currently defending. I, uh... What part are you currently defending? I don't know, because it's weird. So if somebody... It's that thing where, like, if somebody else from Philadelphia is like, ah, yeah, there's too many crackheads near uh, Center City, you're like, ah, I feel that. And it's like, you know, and if people are like... If you're having a conversation with another Philadelphian and they're like, yeah, I had some water ice the other day, you're like, oh, man, mango is my favorite. I like a good gelati. And, you know... Like, Where are you going with this? I, my point is, like, <laughs> but if you're talking to somebody from Philly and they're like, you know, I, you know... Philly sucks. You're like, yeah, man, I feel you. And then somebody from like Bucks County is like, I don't understand gritty. You're like, hey, fuck you. Gritty's my half brother. <laughs> like, since when are you from? Gritty Delco? went to college with my cousin. <laughs> since when are you from Delco? Dude, Delco's literally right there. Yeah, you realize that, right? No, it's the area. What's the area of PA you're from? We're from Chester County. Yeah, um, which we're is... like we're forty minutes northwest of Philly. Yeah. And where I where I grew up, so I think Delaware County is probably like the third most recognize fourth most recognizable part of Pennsylvania. Well, especially now after Mayor of Easttown. Yeah. Um, oh God, I forgot about that. Which, by the way, Easttown's in Chester County. Easttown is in Chester County. Why is everybody in the show from Delco? Like, mm-hmm. I don't get it. I Have don't you watched the show? No. I watched the SNL skit making fun of the okay, show. Okay, well, that's probably why you're confused. Um, but yeah, so Delaware County is literally down the street. Like, we border Radnor. Um, yeah. And uh, Radnor is the part of Delaware County that pretends it's not part of Delaware County. Um, because <laughs> they're almost Chester County, and they're almost Conestoga, you know. They have Villanova, I'll give them that. Anyway. Yep, anyway. Along. Um... Chloe White said for one ninety nine. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, continued my story and stuff that happened. I believe that she's referring to the email that she sent. Ah, good. Yes. Very nice. Wonderful. Uh, the next one is from uh, Pyre Z for two dollars. Thank you very much. No, not that way. Uh, they say y'all should sell flesh pedestrian bath water. I think we joked about this already. I think we did. Um, if if y'all can convince us that you'd give us the same amount of money that. People would pay for she who shall not be named's bathwater. <laughs> then sure. Okay, but here's the thing about uh, I'm just gonna say her name, uh, Belle Delphine. I respect and the banned. Hustle. Sorry, I respect the hustle. Oh yeah, like I think she went a bit too far. Um, but I like no. She this she... girl started off doing like cosplay in 2017, and within two years was selling her bath water on the internet for like 30 bucks an ounce. She took... I don't know... Like, that. I am impressed. She took the internet by it? the ball... Uh, it's, it's... It is someone who, for the sake of your marriage, I am recommending you don't Google. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just some some young... She's like the original e-girl. Ah, uh, I don't... She's the one who put them on the map. Yeah. I wouldn't call her the original. The original e-girl would definitely be Boxy. Um, yes. <laughs> I would say that's accurate. Um, My name is She Boxy. literally... This this girl, essentially, so she was doing, like, lewd photos and stuff like that, and she it just It wasn't even of, that. They were totally, like, fine. They were just cosplay. They were just anime cosplay. Yeah, but then she, like... And then she went... She kind of, like, she yeah. kept upping the ante, but never quite crossing that line. But she had developed such a brand just based around her that she quite literally took the internet by the balls... And just yanked it like a slot machine and was printing herself money. That is the worst thing you've ever said in my presence. <laughs> <Yes>. um, <laughs> I mean, she, wow. she really, she literally was selling wow. bath water for thirty dollars a pot, Ooh. and it was like a little. It was less than a mug's worth, and she was selling oh. thirty dollars. She sold out. Speaking of mugs, Multiple if you times. like these mugs, uh, yes. I'll, I'll hold it up to the camera. I think yes. uh, um, uh, it's our logo. They can't. You drop it. Uh, put it. Oh, put yeah, it here. It's it clink. Clink it. Um, it's got our logo on it. Uh, it's 
Very nice. It's a little 10 ounce uh, mug. Yep. Perfect for your coffee and whatnot. The print actually came out very nicely. It's really crisp. Yeah. Um, I'm and, excited to use it tomorrow morning. Yeah, and it's got this little cabin on it, which is definitely not Ted Kaczynski's cabin. Um, absolutely not. Uh, uh, we hear Ted's a big fan of the show. Um, <laughs> watches it from prison. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we don't know how he found out about us, but, you know, <laughs> drop us a lot. I actually get fan mail from Ted Kaczynski. Um, <laughs> I'm kidding, I don't. Uh, I, I would really rather not get mail from Ted Kaczynski. <laughs> That's that the last that, thing I want. That would require him knowing your address. <laughs> and that, in and of itself, sounds rather scary. Yeah. Um, but yeah, my point with that was uh, you can get these mugs, you can get these shirts. We have canvas prints of the logo that actually come out really nice. I just gave one to Norman um, as, a, as a thank you. Uh, and we will be adding, of course, uh, the there's the Lift Lodge shirts, um, which are the same logo, but it oh. says the Lift Lodge, and it has a barbell in it. I can't wait for those. Um, and there's also, uh, we're going to have the, the Wendussi shirt. Um, I'm gonna, what else did I commission from Norman? I forget what God, it was. I can't believe we're actually doing that. That's going to be hilarious. I can. Uh, but yeah, so um, we're, we've got some, some cool new merch coming, but check that out. It's in the in the aidenmattis.card.co link in the bio. Yes. Uh, or in the description, in my TikTok bio and all of that. Uh, uh, considering you know. we're, we're... Also, I think until tomorrow, we still have that fire sale going on. Yes. For, yes, we do. Uh, if you use uh, the code WKND, you get 25% off any merch on the store, so now is the time to buy. Yes. And considering we're already starting to plug, uh, and it is 8.30, uh, I want to say... So we're gonna we're going to start wrapping up the show now. If you have any other questions, uh, you know, feel free to ask. Uh, if it's not a super chat, we're probably not going to get to it. But if it is a super chat, we will absolutely fit it in. But as of right now, we're going to start kind of closing things down. Um, Nick, are there any final thoughts? Do you have any questions? Uh, was there any questions that we didn't ask that you would have liked us to? Um, is there know, anything, anything you'd like mind? to talk about that we didn't get a chance to? No, yes. I mean. No, not really. Uh, I did want to say, <clears throat> really appreciate the invite. Oh, of course. Thing. Um, totally was excited for <laughs> the opportunity to get on here and chop it up with you guys. Uh, this is, you know, the whole paranormal field is just one of those areas of uncertainty. And it's just, it was really cool for me once you reacted to that video of mine, the first one, when you tried to debunk it. <laughs> I started looking at your content and I was just totally captivated. So thank you. I really love what you do, and uh, yeah, totally. I feel so appreciated. Respect. No, it's it's just cool to come across <laughs> so much knowledge in you know in the historical field. So yeah. it's not something you see a lot, especially thank from you. the younger generations. But uh, yeah, <laughs> no, I really loved coming on, and I'd love to come on again because yeah. I do feel like we covered a lot of stuff. But there's always more to talk know, about. Those, the ghost and yeah. poltergeist thing that I, I really get a chance to dive into. I also think it would be really fun to do yes. like a big a big call one night where we have like a bunch of people from that side of like TikTok and YouTube come on and talk to each other. Yes. Um it'd be great. Yeah. I uh, like yeah, bring on bring on multiple people as we get more guests and and all that. Um also just really quickly, do you want to plug any of your your socials? Like I don't know what you have aside from TikTok. Really, just my TikTok and YouTube, which are both at Saucy Dad, S A U C E Y Dad. Um, yeah. All right. That's about it. Easy enough. Perfect. Yeah. Do we have any more of the chats of the uh, super variety? Uh, no super chats. Just one that was asking. Uh, I believe sure. it's to you uh, from uh, Thalia Car Carillo. Uh, I believe I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, says you thinking about running for office agent? <laughs> that was a joke I made on TikTok for those who did not watch that. Um, that was very very. I, I joked about running for office to sim for the sole purpose of declassifying uh, whatever's going on in the national parks. Um, there was a point over the last year where I was thinking about running for office for a lot of different reasons, um, <laughs> mainly because I really just don't like uh, any anyone in government. <laughs> <laughs> but since yeah, since I'm going yeah. to Wales, I don't plan on running for office anytime soon. I think at some point in my life, I would love to serve as like a state representative, for the sole purpose of like actually serving. Yeah. Um. Because I I'm disqualified from military service for medical reasons, so I would love to uh you know do that, and I would also love to be in a position where I can, um you know 
not take a salary or where I can donate it to something that I that I care about in terms of like uh, you know wildlife conservation or something like that. But yeah, I think at some point in my life I would love to run for office in a you know very nonpartisan way. Just like I I think I would probably run for like state rep for wherever I live and try and make it a very like. I think politics needs to be not to get totally off track. I think it needs to be a lot more local. Um, I think we're all wrapped up in whatever's going on nationally, and um, you know we don't pay enough attention to the the actual name on our ballot, but instead the letter that's next to it. And I think we need to stop doing that. And I I think one of my favorite ideas was taking the party affiliation on the ballot away, so that you actually have to look into who you're voting for. Uh, I really liked that idea, and I I think that's a good first step, but uh, I think we we try to govern too much based on you know national ideals and party principles, and it's like I'm I, there is absolutely no opinion I have on okay I shouldn't say no opinion, but I'd say ninety nine percent of my political opinions sh- should have no effect on somebody living in San Diego. Um, right. Yeah. So I think yeah, not to get totally serious on you guys, but like if anybody ever decides to run for office who watches this, like. For the love of God, talk to your community about what issues matter to them, and don't try and force your community's issues onto somebody who's living in Washington or Florida or Texas or West Virginia or whatever. Um, you can force your opinions on Ohio because they don't matter. But <laughs> I, you know, that's it. Everyone else gets freedom except Ohio. What about Wyoming? What? What about Wyoming? What's Wyoming? Just checking. Anyway. Um, yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> so, on that very serious note, <laughs> see ya! <laughs> yeah, bye guys. <laughs> uh, do you want to plug our stuff real quick? Yeah, I should do that. Yes. Um, Alright, so of course, I, you are watching the Lore Lodge official podcast. I am Aiden Mattis. This is Aiden Thornbury. I am at the Aiden Mattis on everything except Twitter, where I'm just Aiden Mattis. Um, and I think you're director Aiden on everything. Everything that you should look for. Um, you should not look for his OnlyFans. Uh, You'll never find it. You'll never find it. Um, I wouldn't be so sure. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I am launching a new URL for the store. It's going to be, uh, I think, lo- thelorelodgeshop.com. Cool. Or thelorelodge.shop. It depends on which one I get. Cool. But that'll be up soon. Uh, check us out using that link in the description, that aidenmattis.card.co. Uh, that's where you can find basically all of my socials as well as our store, our email address, all of that stuff. If you want to share stories with us and whatnot. Um, and, uh, I think we should probably set up a PayPal for one, one time donations. We should do that. Yeah, probably. I'm going to do that with a new business account. Yeah, that's a good plan. Good I did plan. adult things and opened a business bank account. And we're going to make an LLC. Look at us. Yeah, and we're going to, we're going to pay taxes. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Even if we really don't want to, we have to. I love, I love the IRS. They're great. All hell. Oh yeah. Um, Fantastic. <laughs> all right, but I think that's everything for us tonight. Uh, Nick, thanks for stopping by. It was great talking with you. And uh, thanks for having me, guys. We will see everybody next week. All right. Adios, all right. friends. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>